This is a Sessions video tutorial, Puddling in Watercolor. In this video, I'm going to apply the puddling technique to this three-part painting. What we have here now is the start of a new painting, and I've just drawn in with my red graphite pencil the guidelines for what I'm about to paint. So in this painting I'm working on a three-part series of seagulls flying across the sky and in this piece um, I the seagulls are white and so I really found it very important to use the red graphite pencil so it wouldn't interfere with the white of the feathers. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start blocking in the color. I'm going to mix up a large quantity. The way that I'm going to paint the sky is um, a combination of puddling uh, to give a sense that the sky is both the sky but also to mimic the liquid sense of the sea that the seagulls are flying across. So. I pour in quite a lot of water, as you can see here. This might seem like a, a little irrational amount to those of you who have worked with gentle water colors. There's a lot of surface material here to work with. And this amount of liquid is not going to go far. So I'm going to be mixing in a little cerulean blue. Cerulean blue, which I told you about a bit earlier, it's a very expensive pigment, but it's also one of my favorites. Um, you're, if there's a color that you're not going to save money on, it should be cerulean blue. Don't buy the hue. Buy the actual color. It's beautiful, beautiful pigment. It's lovely when you're creating skies. It's lovely to give a cool glaze to push things into the background. You can see how I'm just gently wetting my dried paint here with my brush using a natural hair brush for this and I'm just pulling some pigment into the water. I'm going really slowly with this process because I want to get just the right color and I don't want to load up too much pigment at once and spoil the whole batch that I've made. So here I'm mixing in some turquoise. See how it's dispersing like that? That chalkiness of it is what makes this a flatter color. Now I also want to mix just a little ultramarine blue in here. See as it's mixing in it kind of um, interferes with the other one and um, they sort of have a little competition going in the water until I swirl them together. This is nice and I'm pointing this out because as your pigments dry the separation that's happening when they're wet is going to have lingering effects on the mark that remains on your page. So it's nice to know how your pigments are interacting with each other initially. I begin by just gently giving the outline of the pigment along the outline of my bird. When you're painting, especially when you're laying down vast quantities of colors using this method of puddling, you're going to have to be as precise as you can because the paint has a mind of its own. It's water and so it flows places. Um, so that can be really great, but it can also be a bit of a disaster sometimes. So you can make those accidents work for you. It generally helps if you're outlining for a little bit first to give almost like a guideline or a barrier of where the paint likes to flow. It seems to listen to those lines and for that reason I'm not using any sort of blocking material the way some people do. I let the paint be my own blocker. So I don't want to lay down one color across the whole page. Uh, so I'm creating different areas where the paint will be. So now I've made a little bit of an outline. I'm going to slowly pour just a little paint down here and then just smoosh it around. Kind of directing the puddle of paint where I want it to go. Th 
This can be what the moment where it's very delicate, as I was suggesting. I'm sure you can imagine how if I'd poured more paint down in that second, it would have been too much to work with. So I like to put it out in just little, little bits, not do too much at a time. Oh, see, look, it's going into the feathers there. That's, that's okay for this one. I didn't want that wing to be quite that way. But that's where an example why you might not want to go straight, straight up against your line if you're very attached to that line. You can always bring in a fine line of color later. Your natural hair brushes are really what you want to use for this sort of thing because they absorb more of your pigments and they hold it in the brush longer. I'm going to have to build up a lot of layers. This richness of the puddle that you saw before, it's not really going to be that way when it dries. It's going to be much, much fainter. And in order to get it to be that exact color, I'm going to have to build up my surface several times. So I want to maximize my drying time and create as many different shapes of puddles as I can with my pigments while they're wet. So I'm going to bounce around the surface of the painting, creating all sorts of different bird-like puddle shapes that uh, will not be sitting right next to each other. And then the second time I come around with puddles, I can fill in um, with some new spaces and some new materials. But, um, oh, Oh no, see there I've made a mistake. But you can see there I didn't want the watercolor to go down into that that wing like that. So I'm trying to I've just gone in really fast with my paper towel and absorbing it up. But the problem is is once you've made a mistake like that, the paint will flow back in later. So I try to take up paint from farther away than, oh, see, look, see, it's flowing back in there. I don't want it to flow in there. So I'm going to just leave a little bit of paper towel there, too, to sort of absorb whatever goes there. I like to just, like, roll up a little bit of my paper towel um, sometimes if I make a mistake on a particular line that I want to keep sort of harsh. And then just, in the end, lay down that little paper towel bit where I don't want the paint to go. Just kind of firmly press it there. Um, and just leave it there. So if the paint sort of runs into it later, which it probably will, the paper towel will absorb more of that. Um, and I won't have so much of a mistake to correct. Mm -hmm.